Welcome back to the channel. Now, a few of you have noticed recently that the content on the channel has changed just a little bit. Some of you have been really upset by this minor inconvenience. Well, today I have an explanation of a little setback that I have incurred that has been passed on to you as a minor inconvenience. Now, we're gonna hop in our little Beater Grand Am here and head down to the shop, but I do wanna give you an update on the Beater Grand Am. Unfortunately, it has been far too reliable for me to gather enough content to show you anything along the way. So we're going to have to make one video at the end of winter, whenever it shows up, uh, of if I made it to the end of winter, how much I spent on it, and if it'll be back next year. So let's hop in our beater, head down to the shop, and I can start explaining why rebuilds are on hold for a bit. I believe we started with like 85,000 miles, so it's got a little over 3,000. I know that because I ended up having to do an oil change on it. And that's as clean as it gets from the rain because I haven't washed it yet. Washing tape, not a good sign. It looks like the landscaper went with the post-apocalyptic look. It seems we are looking at the aftermath of an uncontrolled thermal event. Crews are on the scene of a fire at an auto body shop in Lamont. So I'll walk you through what you're looking at. There used to be a wall here that I'm walking through. And that was a pop machine. Those are batteries. Were. And there used to be a second floor up there. It's now on the first floor and on the front lawn. The second floor up there is okay. There was drywall between the two rooms. That's the outside wall. There used to be drywall up there and shelves and lots of junk. Space heater, always a good sign. And there was a door here. It's still there, kinda. Those were all starters and alternators. They were all in boxes. And the pot machine used to be back between there, up against the wall. They pulled it forward to try to put the fire out. There's the front door we just walked through. We'll head into the office. This door was closed. So until the fire burned through the top half of that door, it wasn't really in here. It was just smoke damage. And it's a concrete wall, cinder block wall around the outside of the office. That's why the fire couldn't get through it. And it just kind of rolled across the ceiling. Floor is a little damp from all the water. This office remodel, well, not this particular one, but before the fire had been going on for about four years. Things don't work very fast in this shop, with the exception of me. And I'm not actually associated with any of the nonsense that goes on in this shop on a daily basis. Not much damage in here, a little heat on this light. Melted the plastic. And of course, plenty of smoke damage, but it seems like the fire didn't actually spread into there. Ceiling fan, no longer in the ceiling. It's more of a desk fan now. Used to be glass block windows there. So now we'll head out into the shop and see what the rest of the damage looks like. I'm just gonna walk to the wall here. That's the only fire damage really is that taillight got a little hot. 
some scratches on there from the fire department walking past it with their equipment. The firemen used their universal key on the front door to let themselves in. Nobody was around to open the door for them. All the debris on top of the car is stuff that was on the ceiling. When it melted, it dripped down on it. Grease, aluminum, dirt, everything up there. And then all, all the soot, of course. Used to be some lights up there. They're not there anymore. This is all the plastic from the lights. Stuck to the tail light. That was all drywall at one time. And that was mainly where the fire was, was just this little room. Of course, the rest of the shop isn't doing too well. Quite a bit of heat up there. building materials that have been there for the last four years while they redo the office. All the light bulbs are broken. And unfortunately the windows were down in this thing so you can see the smoke change the color of the headliner. This one fared probably the best of them all because it happened to be covered with plastic. Since the roof leaks, we covered it up. Might have saved a lot of soot from getting on it. I wish I could say the same for this one. You guys might recognize it. It's the 44,000 mile Honda Civic Si that we were fixing that was hitting the back end. That was all finished, just detailed, and ready to sell. You were supposed to see the last video on it. This one was the second best car in the shop because it was just detailed and it had that coat of wax on it. All the soot just rinses right off. So we're gonna have to clean it up and maybe we get rid of it. Luckily the windows were all up, but it was completely finished. Just my luck. And of course this shop wouldn't be complete without a bunch of Buicks. Had these caught fire, it might have been an improvement on them. This one has like 300,000 miles on it and the other one has 200,000. Another one, the windows were down. Gonna have that barbecue flavor in there for a while. And this is probably the worst one in the shop. It was just painted. And all those marks on the hood, they don't come out. It's gonna need to be repainted. Everything that was covered with paper is still in decent condition, but the fresh paint didn't make it. And this was one of the furthest ones from the actual heat.
this little Jeep was opened up, so the smoke got in there. It's going to have that campfire smell for a little while. This Avalon here was completely finished and waiting to be delivered. Should just need a good cleaning. And another Buick. Some scratches in the quarter from the fire department. We did move a couple of these cars. The first white enclave that we saw, we moved it forward so I could get the ladder up there to close the door, the overhead door. Fire department cut a peephole in that door and then beat on it with a sledgehammer. And they used the universal key on that door. Guess the window wasn't big enough for him. They made a bigger one. For the most part, all the vehicles that were closed up just really need a good buff and polish and good detail and repaint some of the scratched parts on them and that's pretty much it. Uh, the freshly painted ones are going to need to be repainted and the one up in the front where all the scratches were and probably need a convertible top. But other than that, just a little bit of cleaning back here. Unfortunately, there's a lot more damage in here. All the electrical in the entire shop is going to have to be redone. Not sure what they're going to do with the with this car and the Jeep in the back. But. And everything in the shop that happens to be a Buick belongs to the owner. It's got some weird Buick fetish. Not sure why you would choose to rebuild those. Nobody in their right mind would buy one. Come to think of it, I think I just answered my own question. Let's head upstairs. Take a look at the other side. There's not even any smoke damage up here on the ceiling. That drywall kept the heat and the smoke out of here. It's weird how fires work. A lot of water up here. Not sure if it was because the roof leaked or because of the fire department. But there used to be another floor up there. There was so much junk piled up against the wall, that's probably why the fire never made it through there. And that big beam down the center of the shop that holds the roof up, that's going to be the biggest concern. If it's structurally compromised, the shop's going to be a total loss. And all the rest of this stuff should have been in the dumpster a long time ago. So it wouldn't have been any tragic loss if it had actually burned. I guess the Civic could have been a lot worse. That was a brand new windshield just installed a few days ago. And the moldings. Oh well.
They didn't cut this door open. That was nice of them. Somebody was knocking. Nobody let them in. So they let themselves in. I think we've seen just about everything. Have we missed anything? All the vehicles were just kind of collateral damage, either from smoke or stuff melting on it. They didn't really catch fire. That wheel balancer used to be up by this drum for the antifreeze there. I don't know why they drug it so far away. All the heat was concentrated in this corner. So we got a look at what the fire looked like right after it happened, after they let us back inside. All that stuff on the outside, that was what the fire department took out so that they could do their investigation and figure out what the cause of the fire was. So now I'm going to take you on a walk through the shop and describe to you what happened during this fire. Now that they've cleaned it all up, that's why all this stuff is gone, the inside of the shop is cleaned because they are going to rebuild it. So let's start with, at about 3 o'clock in the morning, the Businesses on either side have cameras, and it showed something starting the fire. At 5 o'clock in the morning, 5.03 to be exact, somebody was driving past and saw the fire coming out of the front door, so they called the fire department. By 5.30, the fire department was here, and they decided to gain access by cutting our little triangles in the front door. That's how they had to get in. The glass had already broken out and they started spraying water in there. I guess there was some kind of problem and they couldn't get the uh, fire hydrant right there to work. So they had to go down there and run hoses. So it took a little bit of a delay to actually get some water on the fire. Uh, they busted out the glass block windows to start throwing water in the uh, office. That's both of those windows there and whatever they could here. Then they went around the back side, cut their little A in this door, knocked it in and came in here. They also cut a slat in that door and then beat it in with a sledgehammer until it opened. So they got in both of these doors. Now there were cars here and they did have to go around the cars. And I can imagine this place was full of smoke and you probably couldn't see anything. Uh, and they, believe it or not, did not do a whole lot of damage. They had a couple scrapes on the side of the cars from their equipment, which I can't blame them for that. Uh, they didn't damage any of the cars that were in the shop, um, but when they, once they got in here, they were able to start throwing water on the fire from this side. They punched their holes in the wall so they could ventilate it and get water in there. And of course they had a big hole that was already there for them so that they could throw water in there and put the rest of that fire out. Uh, and really they didn't do any damage to anything as a matter of fact, they even opened that door because there was still power in the building. They were able to open this door instead of cutting this one up, which actually worked out for us because the gate is on that side. We could lock it up, but we were able to secure that side real easily. This side, we could just close the door. And the front door, at least the Vermont police could watch anybody going in or out of the building before we got it all boarded up, which was only a few hours, but it was definitely a way for us to leave it secure. So the fire started right here, and it's probably the only place in the shop where there isn't stuff. So nobody's quite sure exactly how it started, although they are leaning towards this wasn't an accident. And Mr. Spotty is a person of interest. So 
We'll see what his alibi is. So there used to be a floor right above my head with a bunch of junk upstairs that probably should have been thrown away about 30 years ago. And when the fire spread up there, all this came down. And I think what might have slowed the fire down was it took out a water line. So it was kind of dumping water on itself and they stored all the pop for the pop machine, which is right here, or was right here. It's still right here. It's just not really distinguishable as a pop machine anymore. Uh, all the pop was up there. So as those bottles broke, it kind of, you know, put a little douse the fire a little bit. And there was, you know, five gallons water jugs over here. And I think there were six of them. So 30 gallons of water that melted and ended up putting itself out. So I think that kind of slowed it down a little bit. I'm not a fire expert, couldn't tell you, but that was my theory anyway. And it kind of spread into the office and the fire just rolled across the top of the office. That's why it was all smoke damaged in there and everything was burned only for the last like two feet of it. Uh, everything on the floor was just water damaged and smoke damaged. There was really nothing. And then the back office, had the door been closed, it might've just had minor smoke damage in it. So this door right here, was closed and that's what kept everything from getting out into the shop any worse because if it had gotten to the Buick that was parked right there, that car would have gone up and it would have just been a chain reaction. We would have lost pretty much all the cars in here. All the vehicles might have burned and the office, that little addition might have burned, but the building itself was never gonna burn because it's made out of concrete block and the roof is made out of flexicore. If you don't know what that is, it's basically what parking garages are made out of. It's concrete with steel cables inside and you can drive up there. This building was originally built for a second floor shop that you could drive onto from the road that's back behind it. So it never got that addition on the top and it just, well, is a fortress basically. So all we had to really worry about was what was in the shop burning. And as you know, um, well, the shop needed a little bit of work, so this might have been a blessing in disguise. Now, if you've been here for any length of time, you'll remember that the heat didn't work in the shop. We had one heater out of four that actually worked. Well, luckily enough, we're now gonna have all brand new heaters. And our lift had some issues, and well, they're going to total that out, and we're gonna get a new lift. Also, the roof leaked, but amazingly enough, because of the fire, we're gonna get the roof replaced. And that office project that the owner started four years ago and never quite finished, uh, well, it's finally gonna get done. Really convenient. It's likely gonna be four to six months before the shop is usable again, six months until it's completely finished, four until they can see it in here and start working again. Once the lights are on and the power's here, the compressors work, which might need to be replaced if they're fried, uh, then they can start working on cars in here again. Uh, and when I say they and we, it doesn't mean me. Uh, this is likely the last time I will ever be in this shop, uh, not for lack of trying. There's a long story that I will share with you in due time over what's gone on between me and the owner for the last two years. Uh, and when you hear that story, this story pales in comparison. And all the convenient things that happen with this fire start to make a lot more sense. So I will share that in due time. Now, what am I gonna do for the next four to six months? So I think what I'm gonna do is take a little break cause I kinda needed one anyway. And maybe it's time for me to do a little more of the YouTube thing and maybe do some of those collaborations I never had time for before. So if there's anybody that wants to collaborate with me, send me an email, contact me on my website and maybe I could stop by, show up on your channel or you could show up on mine. Uh, if there's any channels that you happen to like that you'd like me to appear on, let them know and tell them to contact me and maybe you'll see me on that channel. Uh, or maybe I'm just gonna disappear for a little while. Now, maybe it's time for me to retire. Maybe it's time for me to start my own shop. I don't know, haven't quite decided yet. I do have a lot of options, but I definitely know I needed a break anyway. So we're going to take advantage of that. A lot of people found out about this situation long before I said anything about it. And they did reach out to me to see if there was any way they could help out or donate. And I have a little problem with the whole donation thing. I'm Gen X and I had an abusive father, which means that I pretty much learned to do everything on my own because I could never count on anybody else. So I don't really know how to take help from people, but it's a character flaw that I am working on. The other problem is I don't know exactly what we're doing. If we're going to just travel around to other shops and make some content for you guys, or we're going to rent a shop in the meantime and come back to this one when everything is done, or if we're just going to buy another shop. 
I don't know, can't tell you yet, I haven't even decided myself. But extra funds definitely is going to expedite that. So if you wanna donate, I'll give you a couple options. The first option is do not send money to a GoFundMe. I'm not taking money from them and I am not setting one up. So if there is a GoFundMe, it is a scam, do not donate to it. That's enough said there. The best way to donate, I believe, because you're actually getting something for it, is to buy some of my vehicles that I will list on my website. I will make videos to put them up there. Uh, then you're actually getting a vehicle. And I'm gonna use that money to, well, do what I always do, put it back into my business, which is what you guys see. Uh, the other way is I will put some t-shirts on my website. These are ones that are printed locally, shipped out by me, and I actually get some money from it. Teespring, don't get any money from them and really don't like them as a company as it is. Uh, but yes, if you wanna, there's a link in the description. You can go buy them right off my website and I have a limited quantity because I wasn't expecting to you know, have this happen. Uh, the other way and the way that I do not prefer, but I will leave the option out there, is to just directly donate money to me. Then the best way to do that is on my website, the front page, all the way to the bottom, there is a tiny itty bitty little button that says donate. Click on it and you can donate whatever amount you want. And when you donate, because I feel that I owe you something for it, um, there is a little box where you can fill out a way that you'd like to be recognized. Maybe you don't wanna be recognized. I don't know, but it is your choice. So like I said, I'm not good at taking money. So the donation thing is not, I don't feel super comfortable with it. But if for some reason we got a bunch of money, well, maybe we have a shop sooner than we think and we can just start making content there. Maybe you guys will end up turning me into a YouTuber. I don't know. That's a scary thought. Hopefully everything goes back to somewhat normal or even better and I can make more content for you guys um, and sell some more vehicles because I have a whole bunch of them. Now I do have older content shot in the shop before it turned into a barbecue. Uh, so you will see those eventually. Um, and don't worry, the black Mustang did survive. I've just been waiting for a title for uh, like 13 weeks and still no title in sight. So when that comes back, I can release those videos because the car will be ready to sell. And I think, because given all this, I don't know if I can even sell it when I get the title back. So we'll figure that out when it's ready to sell. I'll post those videos until then, you're gonna have to wait. Uh, as far as the other cars, there's a few more that you haven't seen yet, so you can't miss them, uh, but you'll see those videos when they come out, when I find a place to work on them, and you'll start out in this shop and it will go to a different location and then, well, it'll all make a lot more sense when you're actually seeing those videos. And if anybody wants a nice workbench, I built this one, I don't know, like 25 years ago. And well, the insurance is gonna pay for a new one and I ain't getting a penny for it. So uh, if anybody wants it, you could have it. Um, pick up in Lamont. I didn't post this video because I wanted any kind of sympathy. I don't need a pity party. I just wanted to let you guys know what's going on and why this channel might look a little different in the near future and maybe for the rest of its future. Uh, I don't know where we're gonna go from here, but we'll figure it out. Now, it could have been a whole lot worse at the time that this happened. I had about $65,000 worth of vehicles sitting around here and I thought I'd lost them all. And if you ask the pizza girl, I was very calm for somebody that thought they just lost $65,000. She was a little more worked up than I was. Uh, turns out that only the two cars inside that were damaged was really all I lost, about a thousand bucks to fix those and we're good to go. So 65,000, thousand, yeah, I'm okay with a thousand dollars. I just make a little bit less on those builds and it's part of doing business. Now insurance does cover that, but I'm never gonna see any of that insurance money. It just goes straight to the owner. That's why I didn't even turn in the two vehicles that were damaged because I'll just take care of those myself. So that's pretty much the whole story and why our channel is gonna look a little different. Thanks for watching, thanks for your support, and we'll see you guys in the next video. I figured I'd include a little extra footage. It's pretty much the shop. It was right after we got in there, before they boarded it up. It's a little bit brighter, you can see a little bit more, but I filmed it with my cell phone in between trying to do other stuff, so it wasn't really complete. So I came back later, and filmed it all, and used the light the best I could to see what I could see. But I had the pictures, so 
there you go. And then at the end, I got some stills. If you want to take a look at them, it's about the cleanest the shop has ever been since I've ever been here. And that's 44 years. Sometimes I get so mad, there's no control in me. My thoughts get so bad, I'm like, I might grab a bat, I don't know. My wrath, my blood boils over like, oh God, here goes. I lost all feeling from my head to my toes. You said some shit that I can't let go. So just stay tuned for the rest of the show. So have you ever felt betrayed? Switches how you see things. Realize something needs change. Cause I know you got me f***ed up. Let me show you what's up. Enough is enough I'll take a face full of pavement Just to make a statement I know there's no turning back Oh God, adrenaline wasted So mad I can taste it I know there's no turning back I'll do what it takes I ain't making mistakes like that I'll bleed on your face To make you go take it back I'll lose my shit I go crazy when I'm